Hello, folks, again, Liz Soria here, your host with the Tax Advisor Business Coach Says Podcast. It's another exciting day. I have had many amazing um, experts in the past, but I have another one today that I really, really believe that's going to help you a lot. It has to do with business credit, right? That we ignore so much of that issue, but it's such an important aspect. So let me go ahead and introduce you briefly, briefly to uh, Jerry. Um, Weiler, she's been guiding individuals to the confusing world, okay, of credit for over 20 years. That's a long time, by the way, Jerry. Her articles has been very, been widely syndicated, and she's the author and co-author of five amazing books, including the most recent, Finance Your Own Business and Get On the Financing Fast track is that right yep that one sorry so she has she's an education director from nab which gives small business owners free personal and business credit scores and guidance and helps make match them to financing she's been interviewed for over three thousand news stories including today's show and deadline nbc wow what can i tell you jerry i mean uh you, you have an amazing uh, background, so thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your time, and, and hopefully uh, we can uh, try digging as much as possible out of you because we definitely want to help the audience. As you know, most of the uh, audience that we have in the show has to do with small entrepreneurs, but also other small, you know, uh, successful business owners. Um, so let's get started here. I mean, uh, you ready? And welcome. I am. Absolutely. All right. Excellent. Okay, Jerry. So, you know, what what is really um what is a business credit and why should entrepreneurs really care about? Because what's the difference between you know, obviously we have a personal credit and a FICO. We always want to make sure that hopefully it's as high as possible. But why is it important to build a business credit on the side uh, versus to just a personal please? Well, I've been involved in credit education, as you mentioned, for a long time. And back in the day, when I used to give workshops or seminars, I'd ask people, have you seen your FICO score? And they would blank on me. They just had no idea what I was talking about, because it wasn't that common then for consumers to check and, and monitor their personal credit. Well, now that I'm with NAV, I ask the same question of entrepreneurs, do you know your business credit scores? Do you know your business credit? And they look at me with a blank, you know, blank stare. They don't, but actually business credit has been around longer in the U.S. than personal credit reporting agencies. The first, uh, the first credit reporting agency really on a large scale basis in the U.S. was done in Bradstreet and Abraham Lincoln, our, our former president, actually worked for them along with three other uh, president. So very interesting. It's I been around. I love something about history. There we go. <laughs> See, we'll be learning, right? <laughs> so it's been around for a while, but how does it impact the entrepreneur today? Well, if you think about mo the way most of us start a business, we sort of bootstrap it. We do what we have to do, right? We might use our personal savings, our personal credit cards. If we're lucky, we have a family member who's willing to invest in our business. If you're lucky. <laughs> if you're lucky and maybe not so lucky because sometimes that can turn into a disaster as well. Okay. Um, but you do what you have to do, right? And right. there is this whole other world of commercial credit reporting that creates credit reports on businesses. And when you start establishing business credit, you position your business with the ability to borrow based on the strength of the business's credit and finances. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not something that if you're just starting today, you're gonna to have a great business credit rating tomorrow, but it's very doable. And it's a process that I encourage entrepreneurs to think about because once you reach that stage, you have more options for financing. You may have better options for financing mm -hmm. and you can start getting away from those risky personal guarantees where you have debt on your personal credit report that's associated with your business, or if your business doesn't make it, they can come after your personal assets and your personal income to try to collect. So this is a way to position your business as a legitimate, solid business that has credit in its own right. That is a great point. And, and you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because, uh, you know, as you said at the beginning, we do what, what it takes, I mean, to, to really, uh, you know, start a business. Uh, but the fact is that, you know, we really, you know, it's kind of scary that you're using your personal credit and if something, you know, goes wrong, uh, you know, they're going to come after you legally. I mean, uh, it, it's, you're, you're, 
it's your liability. You're, you're personally guaranteeing that you're going to pay that loan and what we call non-recourse, mm -hmm. as we call in terminology, right, uh, are the ones that you want to have for your business because if something should happen and hopefully not, you have a wonderful and successful business, uh, then you're off the hook, right? Because if it goes through the business, then they're using your, your, your business uh, score and not making you liable. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I like to go a little bit because I know you are the edu edu education director of NAB. Can you explain a little bit more about NAB? I, mean, I did a brief introduction, but I think this is going to help for a lot of, you know, uh, of the business owners out there, how they can get information, how they can help them and you, how you can directly help them too. Sure. So a couple of years ago, I was writing my most recent book, Finance Your Own Business, and I came across this company that was um, trying to provide business owners with information about business and personal credit. And in the personal credit, I think we've got a we're in a much better situation when they were than we than we were when I started in this business. Now you can get free credit reports. They tell you if you get turned down for credit where that credit report came from. You you know you just have a lot more information available on business credit, not so much. So it's very sort of scattered and there you have no right to a free business credit report, no right to a disclosure if you're turned down based on your business credit. So this company was trying to fix that. And the reason they were trying to fix it is because our founder, Levi King, owned five different businesses and he ran into problems with business credit and financing. So he really wanted to help small business owners avoid the misery that he went through himself. So I thought it was kind of cool. I put it in my book. And uh, we held up the book a little while because we were waiting for the um, SEC to uh, announce the new crowdfunding rules, you know, that, that took a while. Mm -hmm. And so the book was held up for a while, waiting, waiting, waiting. And I'll tell you a quick story. Literally, the day we went to print with that book, because we said, forget it, we're just going to go ahead and print the book. The day we went to print, they announced the new crowdfunding rules. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> so the book is still helpful and, and it's, it still has lots of information about finance. We were hoping to include that information in the book. But regardless, uh, w one really great thing came out of the book was that I reconnected with NAV to, to, to check out what they're doing now. I fell in love and I liked it so much that I joined the company. So here's what happens if you, if you come to NAV. You can sign up for a free account and much like Credit Karma or Credit Sesame or one of those sites that, that you use. That is great. Did everyone heard the word free? <laughs> free. You can get a free account and it's going to show you a personal credit score and two business credit uh, ratings. How is that? that? What am I going to explain? What do you mean by two credit rating? Uh, so credit? You're, you have your personal credit scores and then your business has its own credit scores. Okay. So we're going to show you where you stand with Dun & Bradstreet, which is the, the credit bureau I mentioned earlier that's been around forever, and Experian. Yes. Experian has personal credit, but they also have a separate commercial database with commercial I credit scores. Look, I just find out something new. There we go. So Bye. there you can you can monitor that on a regular basis. It's updated every month. And then we go one step further because we found that many small business owners haven't built business credit because they don't really know how it works. So we offer free tools that will help you walk you through the steps of building strong business credit and then finding financing offers that are a good fit for you based on your business and personal credit. And my firm belief but it's my firm belief is that business owners need to understand both their personal and business credit. It's not one or the other. They're both very important. Very important. I agree with that. Yeah. And, and I think that's great that, I mean, that service is available and no excuse. I mean, you know, goodness, I mean, it's, it's free service and we need to keep an eye. I mean, especially all these things happening, right? With, uh, you know, identity theft and all that. I mean, it's happening. I, I know I've been a victim more than two or three times. And you know what? Can that happen in the business? Apps. I'm so glad you raised this because we the business of personal identity identity theft is it all you know it's in the news all the time. Yes. Business owners do not realize their business can be a victim of identity theft. The business can have its identity stolen, and it's sometimes easier than personal identity theft because we're not checking our credit reports, so they can get away with it longer, right? So I'll give you a quick example. Um, of someone that Garrett, my co-author, Garrett Sutton, he's on uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad team, and he's a small business attorney, and he found out that there was this business where the fraudsters opened an office in the same office building as the other building, as the, as the other business, so they just opened a suite on another floor, then they went ahead and applied for credit and got all this credit in the name of that other business. And they were literally in the same building at the time. 
How scary. That is yeah. a scary thought. Oh, and it's, it's also kind of easy to get on to, um, to get into a lot of times the states aren't super vigilant. They can, you can get into state, state corporate information and find out information about a business. Then you just change, you update the address, you do something like that. And then the mail comes to you and suddenly you're, you're opening credit in the name of the business. Uh, there was also a story recently in the news about a, an attorney who had, who was victim of both personal identity theft and business identity theft. And you would think, who wants to mess around with an attorney? <laughs> and <laughs> and it's, it's, exactly. <laughs> that, that is even even more concerning, right? I mean, I could see like the average Joe that they would try to do that for a small company, but an attorney, I mean, you, uh, who wants to mess around with that? So that's really incredible. And that's interesting at the same time, because like you said, a lot of us, uh, we more, you know, emphasize, we're more concerned about what's going to happen in the personal side, right? They're not really paying attention to what's happening in the business and, and, and just being aware that, yeah, you can have fraud also happen in the business side. That That is something to, to be really worried about, really. Yeah. And, and you can't, you can't block your, you can't freeze your business credit. You can freeze yeah. your personal credit, but you can't freeze your business credit. So that's, that's why I encourage business owners, even if you're not in the process of looking for financing, you're not that worried about building business credit because you, I don't need anything right now still monitor it because if something unusual shows up, you want to catch it quickly so then you can act and hopefully stop them. Well, what are some of the things that, uh, you know, you would recommend to, for someone to build a strong business credit score? I mean, uh, what is the process? What can they do to, uh, you know, because like you said, it does take years <laughs> possibly, right, to, to build this the same as the personal. So, what are a few little tips that we can kind of, you can share with us here, huh? And that way we can learn a little bit from you and, and hopefully, you know, most entrepreneurs are going to apply this because I always tell everybody who listens to this or they're watching us on YouTube, like right now we were actually, we're going to be broadcasting. They're all a podcast series too. Uh, you know, and I tell them it's important, you know, uh, a lot of these, you know, information is for you to use. I mean, you know, that's why it's there for you. So, Please, get, can you get into that with us and, and give us a few tips on how they can get started if they have it or how they can improve it? Sure, sure. So the first thing is you find out if you already have an account or if you're already on the radar with Experian okay. and Dun and Bradstreet. Okay. So you can do that through your NAV account. You could also go to their sites and they have search functions. Uh, if you have a corporate entity and you filed that with your state, then you may be on their radar already. doesn't mean you have credit, but you may be in their database as a, as an active business. So that's the first step. You want to be on their, on their radar. If you're not, you have to get a, what's called a DUNS number from DNB. It is free. It takes a while. Again, you can do that through your NAV account or you can go directly to their site, but that's, that's their equivalent of a social security number for their database. So that's how they track each individual business. And I'm sorry to, to, to interrupt you there, but that also is like having a separate, you know, implementation number, right? But in this case, it's through your database. Right. Through Down and Bradstreet. And if you, if you want to go for government contracts in the future, if you want to do business with the Walmarts or Targets or big companies, if right. you want to have an app in the Apple store, you need to get a Dunn's number. It's not required, but it makes it a lot faster if you have one. So this is something you want to do anyway, even if, again, even if you're not thinking about building. But then here's the tricky part. With okay. personal credit, we, um, you, op you get an auto loan or a credit card or a mortgage, and it's going to show up on your personal credit, right? All three bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, it's pretty much a given. Business credit's not so simple. Um, they don't always report to all of them. Some of them report, some of them don't. So I recommend you look at two things. One is to establish a few vendor accounts. And these are accounts where you're going to open an account with a company like Quill or... Um, or Granger or Uline, and you're going to buy something you need for your business, like shipping boxes or janitorial supplies or paper for your printer. And you're going to buy it on an, what they call terms. So they let you buy it, receive it, and then they tell you, you pay us in 30 days. What they do then is they report that to the credit bureaus and that starts to build your business credit. And I do have a, a short link for an article that I wrote with some names on there. It's Nav dot com forward slash vendors with an s at the end so nav.com forward slash vendors you'll get the names of those vendors i talked about the great thing is these guys don't check personal credit so 
you you should be able to establish it even if you're you're working on your personal credit and you want to build your business credit. So getting a, and for DMB you need at least two accounts reporting in order to have a, a Paydex score, which is their version of a FICO score. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing I recommend you do is get a business credit card. So most business credit cards have two advantages. One is they don't show up on your personal credit unless you default. It's not true of all of them, but definitely true of, of the majority of them. That means that if you're running up some balances, maybe you have a seasonal business and you need to stock up in September on some inventory, right? That you're going to sell in December. You have a high, you have a high balance on your credit card. Well, that's going to sink your personal credit score. So you want to keep it off your personal credit and a business credit card can often do that. The other advantage is though, most of these business credit cards do report to business credit. And so you are building a, a reference on your business credit while keeping it off your personal credit. So I think that's a, a great advantage for entrepreneurs and something to definitely consider. Right. And, and you know, one of the, one of the suggestions I, I tell my clients too, that it's, it's great, even if you have an average credit, again, you know, a score in your personal is, opening an American Express. You know, an American Express can really, really make a difference, especially if it's under the business. I think it does help a lot, right? Well, and I'm glad you mentioned American Express too, because some of American Express's cards are called charge cards. I mean, you have to pay them in full each month. And I find a lot of business owners are very debt averse. You know, they don't even want a credit card because they're afraid they're going to run it up and end up with a balance. Well, you have to full each month. But here's the advantage of a charge card over a debit card, besides the credit reporting, which I think is an advantage. The other advantage... I think I'm losing you there uh, for a moment, Jerry. Can you hear me? If they are fraudulently used. Okay. So if your business... I'm sorry, stop there for a moment. Can you repeat the last few things? Because sure. it sure. kind of froze up coming from your end, so we couldn't hear you. So please... Sure. So an advantage of getting a charge card over a business debit card is okay. that you, it will not, it, it, the business debit card does not provide you with protection if it's lost or stolen. So if it's lost or stolen and it's a business debit card, you could lose the money in your account. With a credit card, if it's lost or stolen, $50 is the most you can be held responsible for. That's a good point. That's something to definitely keep in mind. And I think personally myself, I mean, I remember using debit cards all the time, even my, my personal, you know, uh, credits and I stopped. I stopped because one time I thought I had lost one and I went crazy. And luckily, no, it wasn't. It was near my car. I had to just drop it off. You know, it came out of my purse somehow. Uh, and and, and I, I remember, I mean, I was so concerned because I knew that, you know, debit cards do not have fraud protection. And I thought, I can't imagine who just took my car or I, you know, dropped it wherever it was because I was not blaming anyone. I just felt responsible that I did something, you know, terrible. I mean, to lose my debit card. And you know what? That was good enough for me to never, since that day, to ever use a debit card again. Everything yeah. has a credit card. And I can tell you, not only my business credit card, because yes, folks, I do have credit cards. Capital One is another one that's very good about helping businesses, right? Mm -hmm. We're building the, the credits. Um, but because it's really important to keep, again, everything separate. I tell this to my clients. And, and, and I know that in the beginning, you know, we try and scrape here and there and try and pull money from different places. But we need to realize that we have to have that expense completely separate from our personal, you know, accounts. Um, it, it's just good for you. It's good for your books. It's good for your accounting. Good for everything, even your credit. Because like you said, you can build credit along the way. So why not take advantage? Anyhow, you have to pay the bill. Might as well start somewhere, right? So, um, and what other, um, uh, you know, uh, services do you, do you provide, like, maybe, like, uh, online uh, webinars or things like that through now? Uh, you yeah, do? Oh. I do. I do. I love to do webinars. So, we have free webinars. Um, there's also an offer now where you can get my book, uh, Finance Your Own Business, the printed copy mailed to you. If you sign up for a NAV account, you do have to go to a specific link. So, it's just my first name. G E R R I Jerry okay. dot link. So Jerry dot link forward slash free book. 
If you go to jerry.link forward slash free book, um, there's an offer to get my book, Finance Your Own Business, and sign up for a free NAV account. And uh, hopefully between the two, you're going to have what you need to, to get started. Thank you, Jerry. You've been very generous by giving us the, that, that link. And, and I can tell, come on, folks. I mean, you're getting it for free. I mean, you can go wrong. And, and you know what? We need to learn. This. These are important aspects of our business. Uh, you know, and I know there's so much things that we have to learn when we are in business because there is no perfect manual or guide that we can go to chapter one or five or 10 and kind of come up with these kind of answers. But I really believe that you know, these kind of services is out there available for you. And it's just a matter of you reaching out and, 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 and getting help. And I always tell this to people, you know, we start business sometimes, whether it's because of passion or because maybe it was a family business or whatever might be the reason behind it. But what matters is that we need to build a good team, even if it's not in-house, out there with other, you know, organizations and professionals that can really support us and help us. And you know what, it is important, we need to build our credit because again, like, like Jerry was saying, what happens if something goes wrong with your personal credit? You need yeah. to and, back up. And on the team part, I can't agree more. I often write about bringing your accountant in, you know, an accounting professional like yourself in as a team member because a lot of the financials that your accountant helps you create can also be used to help you get a loan. So some lenders want to see, they want to see your revenue, they want to see your profit and loss, they want to see projections in some cases. And if that's overwhelming for you to do yourself, then work with your accountant and, and that information, having that ready is going to give you more, more, you know, more options. And I really, I really want to emphasize that for many businesses, they turn to financing in one of two situations, either a crisis, or an opportunity, right? <laughs> so they so get, true. they're in trouble, <laughs> or they, or they get the, this great opportunity, and they're going to get this big job, but they have to have X. Yep. So they turn to financing to fill that, and if you're not prepared, that's when you end up with high cost financing that makes it difficult to be successful. So if you get this stuff in a row now before you need it, and you just you know you just say, Liz, I need to get this, these, these together, help me get this together, then you have this ready. And then when that comes along, you're not caught off guard. You don't end up with very expensive financing. In the business financing world, they don't have to tell you an APR. They don't have to tell you an annual percentage rate. And some of these loans can cost two, five hundred percent. So you really have to be very careful and proactive. And that's, that, that is a great, great tip and information you just provide us with, Jerry. I mean, what, how does the, the business credit really ranges in, 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 in number? I mean, is it similar to the FICO or, or is, it, is it different? No? Okay. There very you go. different. Yeah, very different. So the range for the um, Experian IntelliScore and the DMB Paydex score, two popular scores, are zero to 100. 100 is the lowest risk, so that's the best score you can get. If you're 80 to 100, you're very good. If you're 70 to 100, pretty good. There's also a FICO score, though, that's specifically for small business. It's called the SBSS score by FICO, and it can be used in many SBA loans, so SBA guaranteed loan, as well as bank loans. So if you're going for a bank loan or you're going to a bank or another financial institution to get an SBA loan, you want to know what your FICO SBSS score. That ranges from 0 to 300. 300 is the best. And in the case of the SBA loans, you have to have a, a minimum score of 140 to pass the initial pre-screen. Most lenders want to see 160, but you need a 140 to pass that. And here's what's interesting about that score. That score can actually take into account your personal credit as well as the business credit of your business. So both uh, credit, sets of credit data can come into play in that particular credit score. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I think this is great information. I mean, like I said, again, I mean, uh, you know, entrepreneurs need to understand that, you know, we, we depend, and usually a lot of them, we just start, you know, on their own, they don't even have partners or anything, especially those, you need to build strong, you're solid, your business credit, because that's going to back you up. That's really what it is, especially if you're a private, you know, a health company, because remember, as a public, you're normally selling stocks and you're getting all this capital and all this money. But if you're probably held, I mean, you're depending on the money or revenue that you're making or, like you said, getting loans. 
So by bringing that, those loans into your business, and, and again, I, I always strongly recommend if you can put a loan, a uh, non-recourse into your business, do so. Yeah. Don't take it personal because the day you do need something, whether it's going to be a new mortgage or a new car payment or whatever it is, and they have, you have all these outstanding loans because you're supporting your business, you need to be careful with that, you know? So definitely that, that's really important. Okay, so you, you, you've been very generous about, you know, giving us the, the link for, your, for, for the book. Um, and you say the webinars, how often are these webinars done, uh, Jerry? I mean, is there like a schedule on that, an agenda where they do it once a month or? You know, I don't have a set schedule, but, um, if you, if you want to email me, uh, webinars at nav.com, I'm happy to let you know when the next ones are coming up. I do one on financing. I do one on business credit and I do one on personal credit. So try to cover all three bases there. And we also have on our website, at the very top of the website, there's a menu that says resources. And in there you'll find calculators. So you can use these free calculators. Let's say you get an offer for financing, you don't really understand the cost. And this is common. There was a story, it was on Forbes, I believe. It was a hair salon owner and she went to go get financing. She got an offer and it said on the offer, it said 14%, I think it said stated rate. And stated rate isn't a term we use in personal credit. In personal credit, we use annual percentage rate, right? It's always right. APR. Okay. So uh, that offer was run through one of these calculators, and the uh -huh. equivalent APR was over 4,000%. Uh, what was that again? 4,000% APR. Why? So it says 15. So she's thinking in her head, right? She's thinking 15% APR because that's what we're used to using. We don't right. have that in business credit. So instead of the equivalent of 4,000 APR. So you have to, you, you want to make sure that it's sustainable. And the other thing I'd say, this is where another reason why I so encourage um, my readers and my audience to work with their accounting professional is to make sure the loan is sustainable. You know, if, you, if you're not sure, sit down with your accounting professional and say, look, can I really afford this loan? Because some of them are very toxic. They're almost the equivalent of a payday loan in the business world. And sometimes it can make sense. There may be an opportunity where you can make so much money that it's like, mm -hmm. okay, it's worth it. But you have to know your margins. You have to know your numbers. And that's where your accounting professional can be really helpful. I agree with you 100%. That's for sure. Um, you know, what's interesting is, like you said, um, you know, it's not only building the credit, but keeping the credit, right? Because we can do many things to keep it solid and in and, and, and separating again it comes down to this uh you know and i tell this to, to my audience is that we want to do that separation it's crucial for our business we have to it, it's it's and, and sometimes i have to kind of emphasize this over and over um because they have tendency especially at the beginning uh, you know new new entrepreneurs and, and startups you know they they're pulling money everywhere and, and they don't even realize how much money they have spent out of pocket. You'd be, you'd be amazed. You know, when I, when I go through, through the books and I, you know, I tell them for an example, Hey, uh, how did you start the company? Who, who paid for that? Or who, who paid for the lease of the office? Oh, I had to use my personal credit card. I had to, okay, well, that's an expenses. That's a startup, you know? And I tell them, I say, as soon as that happens, you want to establish, you know, that, that business credit. And it's great. So now definitely offers webinars and you're the one who does the webinars. Is that right, Jerry? Oh, you great. Really that's excellent. So they're going to get to see you again then. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the free credit that can register. And you say it does monitor on a monthly basis. Is that yes. right? Yes. Personal and business. So you can monitor personal and business. Mm -hmm. And this is a complimentary service. Great. Yes. Yes. We do have a, a upgraded subscriptions that are available if you want to get okay. more information or more detailed reports, but many of our customers use the free account successfully. And then they follow our tips for building business credit, which are also described in the, you know, in the service. So. That is excellent. That really is. And I know that you, you, you're a well-known author and, um, do you have any plans for the future to create another, to actually write another book or, or where are you at? <laughs> it's a lot of work. 
<laughs> every time I write a book, I say, I'm not doing that again. And then I get sucked back in. <laughs> you know, it's funny that people don't realize, I mean, I, 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 I've had, you know, the pleasure to, to write only one book. And I tell you, that was a lot of work. And people don't realize that sometimes you hear, oh, you can do it in an hour. I'm like, really? <laughs> I, said, well, I guess it depends on the subject that, that, that you're writing about, right? Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I think things that are so profound and, and really, you know, how, you have to have certain knowledge and experience uh, to, to write about that, you know, in my situation, when, when I published my very first book, and that was like almost three years ago, uh, that was a project. <laughs> Let me tell you, it took me like a good three months. It really did. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and, and I think that I was actually, I even consider myself to be lucky that I was able to just, you know, put it in Amazon too for like after three months. But I mean, I, I was like really surprised how people do take much longer and others that can tell you they're doing such a short span of time. I don't know how they do it, but definitely that's true. Now, is your book also available in audio uh, if people want to listen to it? I mean, yeah. It is. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Where can they get the audio, I mean, format? Would that be the MP3 or MP4, I think it is called? <laughs> yeah, it's on Amazon. So there's an audio book version. It was narrated by my co-author, Garrett Sutton. So you'll find Excellent. that on Amazon as well. That is wonderful. Yeah, because again, uh, you know, we are so crunching in time now in these days, and, and I think a lot more than it was even 20 years ago, that I think the people who may not have the opportunity to just sit there and spend a few hours reading the books and so on, that at least they have the opportunity to be driving, listen to, you know, the, the audio. And I think that that would definitely would be, you know, a much better, you know, option at this point. So you're, you're currently working, uh, uh, I guess, investing all your time with NAB. Is that correct, Jerry? Yes, correct. I work full time as education director and I do a lot of traveling, speak at a lot of conferences and also work with our customers and, and other small business owners. And I, I, I want to throw in something we, we touched on earlier real quick that I think is also really important. And that is, and I'm sure you see this with your clients, where they do some work and they don't get paid for it. Either they don't get paid right away or they don't get paid at all. And I had a part, business partner who stiffed me completely for several tens of thousands of dollars. Um, our founder, Levi King, he tells a story. He was, his first business was sign manufacturing in Idaho. And he did a lot of work for this chain of Mexican restaurants. And the owner would just string him out on payment and would just give him enough to sort of keep him going. And finally, one night he read an article that said, you know, we need to fire these clients. And so he said, that's it. He went in the next day to the, the owner of the restaurant chain. He said, I'm done. Here's how much you owe me. You need to pay me. And it turns out, that that restaurant owner had burned his bridges with every other sign manufacturing company in any you know, location that could get signs to him in Idaho. And so basically he was stuck. And so he caught up on payments and then became a, a much more diligent customer. Well, for us as small business owners, if we're providing goods or services and we're not getting paid up front, then we're essentially lending, right? We're, we're a lender. And so we need to think about checking business credit on our potential clients. Maybe a, a that's very good. Thanks, Jerry, for bringing that up. That that is a very good point. Absolutely. I mean, because if you're going to be extending, you're right. It's like you're extending the credit. That's what it is. Even if it's seven days, it doesn't matter. It's seven days that you're exposing yourself that you know that client might not pay you. Yeah. What happens if they don't pay you? What is the process? Are you going to be charging that interest? You're going to, how are you going to collect? So continue because this is a really important aspect, please. No, so I was going to say one part of that is to check business credit because if the business does show a track record of not paying its bills on time, then you may want to renegotiate, get a large deposit up front or even get payment up front or decide maybe that customer is not going to be your ideal customer and you have to move yeah. on. You know, don't be too desperate about it because you want to make a good business decision. It's a bad feeling to spend as much, all this time on a, on a project or a job or something you're doing and then not to get paid. I mean, it just, it can really hurt a business. One of the things that I enjoy doing, and as you can see, I'm pretty open and, 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 and laid back when I do my interviews, because I don't see it really as an interview. I see it just a, a way of chatting and, and learning from, from each other, because that's what we do, right? And, and I say this over and over, we're here to help everyone we can out there. And, and there's so much 
really free information that people can take advantage. Uh, but as long as you apply it, please. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because it's not about listening and not taking action on doing things. And I see this from many of my episodes because I, I, I know that we have so many things going on in our lives that we we, pay, we listen to something, we say, oh, we did, I'm going to do it. And then something else comes up and something else. And next thing you know, it's been three months or a year and you haven't done anything. So, and, and you know, one of the things that I, I wanted to bring about, and I do this, by the way, with personal things, because it kind of relates to certain topics that I, I uh, you know, I go through the, uh, these type of experts like you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed, one of my clients, without obviously giving name and it's confidential, right? Legally disclaimer. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I found that to one of my clients where I decided being their accountant to no longer work for them. Uh, because my, my biggest concern was when I opened their books was to see this high outstanding accounts payable. Mm. And when I went through all those vendors and realized that some of these vendors have been continuously expanding their credit to, 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 to my client in this case, uh, six months, a year. And he had ten thousand dollars he owned one, another five thousand dollars, and seven thousand. I mean, we, we you know we're talking about an average over a hundred thousand dollars in outstanding payables. Mm -hmm. And guess what? And, and folks that you listen to this, this is really important. I want to share this with you. From my perspective, looking at the numbers, I found it to be so irresponsible, really, for my client because the reality was, but it was also irresponsible from the vendor side. Because you don't continue giving more credit because you're thinking that you don't want to lose that account. A customer is not good if they're not capable of paying you. Especially if you don't see they have good intents to at least make some sort of payment arrangements, please. So don't expand yourself to give credit just because you think that, hey, I want to close, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to lose this account. It doesn't matter if you're going to lose the account because if he owes you that, many, that much money, he's going to continue accumulating money. So, you know, I wanted to share this because it's important for, for some of the business owners out there to realize that sometimes we have a mentality of thinking that, okay, well, you know, I don't want to lose that client, that customer. So, uh, you know, maybe, you know, they had a bad month again and, uh, you know, they owe me $5,000, but I got a $500 check. Well, <laughs> I mean, is your services worth the $500 or is it worth the outstanding balance that you have with that customer? So I, I did, I thought this, this was an important aspect to bring up in, in this episode because I'd seen it <laughs> and I said, even I had said, so long, I resigned. <laughs> I said, right. I do not want to do business with you, you know? Um, and yes, I did get paid by the way. But <laughs> the point is, and <laughs> but the point is, I didn't like to be able to represent someone that I felt that did not want to take responsibility and take care of the vendors mm -hmm. after they were so generous of offering, you know, open credit, no interest. And it'd be one thing if, if they came to you and said, look, I've dug this hole. I want to figure out how to dig out, right? Not if they're not really interested in pursuing that. Um, but it, it, you have an insight because as an accountant, you have insight into all that debt, right? Yes. Each of those individual vendors, if they're not checking business credit, they don't know about the other ones out there, right? So they think, oh, it's only $5,000 exposure. They don't realize that business is in debt $100,000. And the chance of getting paid drops dramatically when the, when the total gets that high. So again, that's something as a business owner, anyone can check business credit. So you can check business credit on partners, vendors, key suppliers. If you have a supplier, if they, if they shut down tomorrow and it would stop your business, you need to see where they're at. You need to monitor them. Make sure that financially, you know, you're not going to be stuck or you're going to have to have a backup plan so that if you they do shut down, you have another supplier you can look at. So these are all things you need to think about that we don't, we don't tend to think about when we get into a business, right? We think about how great we're going to provide our product or our service and how we're going to market it and how we're going to find customers. There's all this underlying information. I'll add one more quick thing that um, you touched on. We just did a survey of small business owners at NAV and we, we asked some of the small business owners, are you thinking about closing shop? And those that did, you know, the number one reason they were thinking about closing shop was cash flow and financial issues. Not surprisingly, right? No, not at all. 
I'm telling so you, right it's now, something as I share you, my story right now, and I mean, this was a recent client, I mean, as early as this year. So, and, and like I said, even I, I, I said to myself, it's not the fact that like I said, I was getting paid, I'm, I'm honest enough to say so, but I feel bad for the other vendors that they weren't providing a good service and delivering their products mm -hmm. and, you know, all these emails and calls, well, where's my payment? And they were almost begging, begging to, to get a partial payment. Why? You already provided an excellent service. Obviously, he keeps coming back because he knows you're good in what you do, but yeah. you... Why? Why expand the you know credit to something you're not even making interest of, right? Yeah. So now, when it goes to NAV, I mean, for example, if I need to look up a, a, a vendor and I enter their name, would I get the information uh, from from this company? Oh, well, that's well, not by the way, please. Yeah, sure. So the way we work that is to to monitor and check other businesses' credit. That's part of a premium subscription. So you will upgrade to one of our paid subscriptions, and then you can monitor credit on other businesses, and it can be updated monthly. So you'll pick the key ones that you want to monitor. You could also go directly to the credit bureaus and purchase those reports, but they tend to be fairly pricey. So usually small business owners aren't don't want to spend 40 or 60 or 80 bucks a pop to check a business credit report. So we make it very affordable as part of a subscription. But the, the, he, let's, let's stop there for a moment, uh, Jerry. What is $40, $50? Yeah. I mean, it's going to save you 5000 right? I mean, seriously, I mean, we, I, I always say, listen, I know that, you know, we all trying to cut, cut, cut corners and, you know, save as much as possible. But certain things that we just cannot. Mm -hmm. uh, what we can, we do, and what we cannot, we cannot. And, and here's the thing, I mean, it, it, isn't it worth, you know, spending 50 bucks and, and, and renting a credit before you, you provide someone with a thousand dollars of credit? I mean, I don't know, to me, it's, 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 it's really a no brainer. Uh, and I'm sure people are listening to this carefully. Now they're starting to click in their minds, hopefully, and, and thinking, wow, you know, uh, you know, I thought about it, but you know, maybe it was not that important now that I understand really how, how everything works. And I think that's important. So your paid service does include, uh, is there a limitation to how many companies? You yeah, five, have? you'll monitor up to five, but you can switch them out also. So if something changes, you can switch out which ones you're monitoring. So, yeah. Excellent. And, and so, so for an example, if, if they're providing new credit, it's five per month. So that's not bad. So if it's a small company starting up, that, that's a good package. I mean, that's yeah. definitely something to consider, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. hope so. We hope so. So I, I, yeah, I mean, again, folks, I mean, I, I think that, you know, we, we need to, um, you know, be more careful when, when expanding our credits to, to other vendors because it's our money. Mm -hmm. And if we're not able to collect, then uh, we're not going to have the cash flow. So and we need that to, to be able to maintain, you know, our doors open in, in our business, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and whether you have a brick and mortar company or whether you have online, doesn't matter. We need that cash flow to continue, you know, coming in. So I always tell, I even sometimes I've told some of my clients, you know what, sometimes offering a small discount can help a little bit, you know, uh, for three, five percent off. I mean, and, and get your money up front or at least make yourself a deposit. Uh, but don't, right. don't expose yourself because some of these companies cannot afford it. They really cannot. And again, like you say, if you get a loan, what's going to happen, maybe the interest too outrageous. Mm -hmm. So you might not be able to afford neither that, that interest rate. So why not collect from the money they really owe you and, and not, they're not having to pay interest to borrow money instead, right? So again, the accounts receivable, everyone, you need to start collecting your money. That's what you work for. And uh, this is not a non-for-profit. So when the majority of my clientele, they're, they're making money and that's where they're going into business. They love what they do, but yes, we're, we're here to also make money. So Jerry, thank you so much. How can the audience reach you again that way they know exactly and and, and 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 give us that link if you don't mind again about the free book please sure sure the link for the book with a free nav account is jerry g not j g e r r i mm -hmm. dot link forward slash free book and if you can't remember that just email me at webinars with an s webinars at nav nav dot com and i'll be happy to share it with you or answer other questions easy enough jerry 
thank you so much. Really, um, uh, you know, you you've been able to provide so much valuable information. And again, I, I believe that we do all these kind of uh, podcasts and everything to help out, the, you know, the small entrepreneur because we want them to avoid these kind of headaches. And I and I, I really emphasize this. And there's ways of doing it. And and you know what? It's, it's costing you nothing. I mean, there's so much good information out there. And yes, be careful because not everyone knows what they're talking about. So you always want to make sure that whoever you're listening to or watching, you know, a, a, a video, that they do have some sort of, you know, expertise and background. Um, because again, not everyone is an expert. And I have to bring that up to everyone's attention because I personally have taken the time to listen to some of these podcasts and videos and some of them are phenomenal. Okay. I, 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 there's no competition. I don't see nobody being my competition out there. We all different and we all bring something different to, to, to the table. But the fact is there's others where, um, well, it's a little bit concerning <laughs> what they're saying. And it's, it's they're not true facts. And guess what? It's just someone that woke up one day and felt like they wanted to record a video <laughs> or they were just wanted to, you know, create their own podcast and the information's just not valid. So please be careful with that. Where are you obtaining the information? Um, and thank you, thank you once again, really, Jerry. And you know what? I wish you a lot of success. And uh, and I hope we stay in touch. And, and like I said, for the audience, please reach out to the Jerry if you have any questions. Uh, it, it, and by the way, in the comments, especially YouTube, you can uh, ask some of those questions. And I'd be happy to forward those to Jerry. And I'm sure as soon as she has an opportunity, she's mm -hmm. going to answer those questions, right? Um, and, and that's what she's here. She's helping to help you, OK? So remember what we take out of this episode is we definitely want to build our business credit so yes personal is extremely important don't get me wrong but we need to build a business credit and there's many ways of doing it she has shared some of those tips so don't sit back and take action all right well until next time everyone thank you so much for watching liking commenting, and sharing and into our next big episode thank you jerry and you take thank care you. of yourself thank you so much